Well, bless the Lord. Standing in front of my brand new appeal to heaven flag, amen? Appeal to heaven. And that's what it's going to take. The title of this little short message is Christian Beware. If you've seen the videos, if you've seen over the airwaves over the last two months where, first of all, Bishop got stabbed during the live stream. And then this year, just two days ago, there was an attempted church shooting, but the bullet got jammed. That's no coincidence. And so let's pray. I want to get it right into the word. Let's pray. Father, in your precious holy name. Father, I give you these next few moments. I pray that you would use me. Put the words on my mouth, Lord God, the way you gave it to me. Let this word be received by those that might hear it. That it would land on fertile ground. Thank you, and I praise you in the matchless, powerful name of Yeshua Hamashiach. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, bless the Lord. Let's get right to it. Portion, popular portion of scripture, Ephesians 6. And we'll pick it up at verse, uh, verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And then here it is, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Put on the shield of faith. That pastor on a Sunday morning was preaching his message, but he was wearing the shield of faith, and that would have quenched the fiery dart that was about to be launched. But thank God that bullet was lodged. That bullet got jammed. Child of God, if you call yourself a Christian, I just uh, humbly come before you, and I say, beware. And I say, now is not the time to be playing games. You have a bullseye on you. If you're calling yourself a child of God, if you're doing anything for the kingdom, ministering, laying hands on the sick, being an encouragement to the lost and to the hurting, doing anything for the kingdom, beware. You have a bullseye and it's flashing and you are on the enemy's radar and he's about to come. And so what are you going to do when a bullet, when a gun is pointed point blank at you? What are you going to do? Now is not, that is not the time. What are you going to do when a bullet is, what, <clears throat> what are you going to do? Man of God, woman of God, when that nine millimeter is pointed point blank at you, that is not the time to start trying to remember, oh, what was that scripture? Oh, what was it that pastor said? Oh, man, what did, what did we learn in that Bible study? Now, that is not the time when that nine millimeter is pointed at you, point blank. You better know in these days whose you are. You better know whose you are. The time of playing patty cake, the time of just going through the motions, the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, <clears throat> the prophet Isaiah prophesied that they sing and that they worship and they, they, they do all these things with their mouth and offer up just lip service and their heart is far from him. You better get right. You better repent. And I'm saying this in love, absolute love. But if you are doing anything for the kingdom of God, know, know that heaven, know that heaven will back you, but also know that hell is coming for you. That's not, I'm not saying that to be fearful, to, to speak fear. I'm not saying that. I'm praying. I'm saying that you, you get as close to God as you can during these last days. As we're breathing end times there, all you have to do is look around and look at the time clock that is Israel. Amen. Heaven's time clock that is Israel. But you better be rooted and grounded in love. You better uh, have the fear of God dwelling in you. Uh, if, if Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians 7, maybe it's 2 Corinthians. Yep, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Therefore, having these promises, well promises, that's the end of chapter 6. We won't go there today. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In the fear of God. That's what we have to live in these days is in the fear of God. 
perfecting holiness, cleansing ourselves of all filth. Cleanse yourself, man of God. Cleanse yourself, child of God. Quit thinking. Quit, quit uh, trampling on the grace of God. Yes, he loves you, and yes, he's full of mercy, and yes, we're in this dispensation of grace, but now is the time to not be, uh, you know, trampling underfoot the, the grace of God. Now is the time to, as Corinthians says, to perfecting holiness in the fear of God, in, in the fear of God. Not looking at the fear of God, not talking about the fear of God, not praying about the fear of God, but in, you are inside the fear of the Lord. It's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level. I was talking to a brother on my uh, on the phone today. I was blessed by that conversation. Amen. Talking Jesus. Amen. I can talk Jesus all day. Hallelujah. But I was sharing with them how the Lord had put on my heart that portion of scripture where Peter denied Christ. And the Bible said that, that Jesus looked at Peter when he denied him. And the look on Jesus' face, I can only imagine the look of the master in Peter. The Bible says that Peter wept bitterly, went away and wept bitterly. Imagine the look, of course, filled with love in those eyes, in those piercing eyes from our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love in his eyes, of course. But I'm sure there was a, a, a disappointment in his eyes. Peter, what are you doing? I'm sure the, the master's face, but the Lord showed me, you know, gave me a vision, not a vision, but just like a, a mind picture of the eyes, of his eyes. And that right there is what keeps me in the fear of God because I don't want the look of disappointment in my Savior's eyes when he looks at me, when I think about, when, when, I, when I, you know, step out from underneath his covering, when I step out of being in the fear of God. I don't want him to look at me that way. I don't want to disappoint my father. I don't want to let him down. I love my father. I love him. And I said, because I love him, that keeps me in the fear of God. But the portion of scripture that we started out with, Ephesians 6, we know it. The armor of God. What it said, uh, but what it said right here. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So all the fiery darts of the wicked one. We got to stand in faith. When trials, when the storms of life, when trials come your way, when the storms of life come your way, you better have all the shield of faith with, with which to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one because he's going to do an all out assault. And not only uh, we talk about a spiritual warfare in your mind. Uh-uh, it's, it's being manifested to the physical where guns are now being pointed at you. We're here. We've talked about it from days, times past, where persecution is going to be coming to the church, the persecution, Christian persecution. You know, we read about it overseas, but now it's here in, in, on, on, on the United, but now it's here in the United States. Christian persecution is on the rise. And so what are you going to do, man of God, woman of God? You say you love Jesus, but what are you going to do when the bullets are start to fly? You're not going to be able to rest on, on your pastor's uh, you know, wisdom, on his sermons, and, you know, and on, your, on your membership. Well, I'm a, I'm a member of this body. I'm a member of this church. No, membership don't matter. It's relationship with Almighty God. It's relationship with Jesus Christ, and that's what's going to matter. Is having an intimate relationship with the Father. Because if you are not in relationship, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, know that he will say, Matthew 7, he said, uh, depart, from, depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you wicked workers of iniquity. So what are you going to do when the guns are pointed at you? Are you going to cower in unbelief? Are you going to be quick to renounce your Jesus? Are you going to be quick to renounce your Christianity? What are you going to do? The time is now. You better start thinking about it. You better start praying about it. You better know who you are. People talk about you better put on the armor of God every morning. First of all, my question is, is why do you take it off? 
Why do you take off the armor of God? That needs to just be a fixture on you. And, and then next is you got to know that you're a son. You don't put on some shit. I am a son. I am grafted in. He is the vine. We are the branches. I am grafted in. I have the spirit of sonship by which I cry out. I'm a father. Hallelujah. It's not time to be wishy-washy. It's not time to be lukewarm. It's not time to just be going through the motions and giving Almighty God lip service. It's time to live in the fear of God, perfecting holiness. In the fear of God, getting rid of all filth. It's that time. It's that time. It's that time. What, are you going to be in fear? Are you going to be like, man, this is too crazy. I don't know. I, I just want to go to church. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to worry about bullets flying. Uh, I don't want to worry if I'm going to make it out of a church service. And you can have all the protocols, and you can have all the security, uh, and you can have all this whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm sure they had that at Joe Osteen's church. But yet they still came in with a gun, and still both were, bullets were flying. I'm sure Bishop Miley has, has the security team, but yeah, he still got stabbed. It's not a game. It's never been a game, but it's really not a game now. It's really not a game. If you're going to call yourself a Christian, walk it out. Choose ye. Uh, who are you going to serve? If you're going to serve Baal, serve Baal. But if you're going to serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with a passion, uh, with a tenacity, uh, with a fervency. Uh, for the Bible said uh, that the prayers of a righteous, with the effect of fervent prayers of a righteous, availeth much. And that's what you got to do. You got to be fervent. You got to be passionate. You got to be passionate for the things of God. You got to make an appeal to heaven. You got to make an appeal to heaven. I say, Father, I, I need you uh, more than ever. Uh, I need you so they can put the words in my mouth and so that I can say them with the boldness, uh, so I can say them with the clarity to my family, to my neighbors, to those that are around me, whoever I rub my rub shoulders with at Walmart or at the gas station or standing in line for coffee, whatever it is. I need your words uh, to be fresh in my mouth. I cause me, cause me to be drawn to you. Cause me even more. I know you've been wooing me. Uh, I know you've been drawing me into the quiet place. Uh, I know you've been calling me into my prayer closet. And I've been ignoring you. I've choosing, I've been choosing every other thing but you. I've been choosing every other thing but you. I've been choosing taking my kids to baseball practice. I've been choosing, you know, all this other stuff that in society says, "Look, you're just a, you're a great dad. Uh, you're, 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 you're the coach of the year. And all this, which in eternity, in the scope of eternity, is going to matter nothing. It's going to matter nothing. What's going to matter? Is because they were, the disciples were unschooled. Untrained fishermen, Bible said, yet they had, they had they recognized that they had spent time with Jesus. And that's what matters is that you spend time with Jesus. We make time for everything else. You got to have that. But it said, Scripture said, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. Glory to God. I encourage you, man of God. I encourage you, woman of God. We're giving you scripture. Know whose you are. Know whose you are. You are a child of God. You're a child of the living God. Not time to walk in fear. We know Timothy said, the book of Timothy said, the, the, the epistle Paul wrote to Timothy, with God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. It's not time to be, you know, to allow torment. It's not time to, to, to allow the lies of the enemy to run rampant through your mind. You've been given the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. If we're going to believe this gospel, uh, if we're going to believe this word, then let's believe it uh, and let's run with it and let's tear, tear the storm, uh, the gates of hell, and rescue souls. That are going straight to hell, friend. Your friends, your family, those that you, you hang out with, those friends 
are going straight to hell.